Welcome to Bill's at Saltwater. Great fun fishing that anyone can do. Yes, you can do this. The beautiful Chandelure Islands are a 50 miles long chain of uninhabited barrier islands located in the Gulf of Mexico. They compose Breton Island, Grand Gaugier Island, and Curfew Island, and are remnants of a former Mississippi River Delta, which formed the easternmost point of the state of Louisiana, about 65 miles east of New Orleans. The Chandelures require a three-hour trip by boat, but only about 25 minutes by air from the town of Lafitte. Actually, the Chandelures are part of the Breton National Wildlife Refuge, a prime marsh and forest wildlife area and strategic migrating point for many birds on their way south. Breton is the second oldest in the National Wildlife Refuge system and was established in 1904. The Chandelures were created 4,000 years ago when the mouth of the Mississippi River discharged into an area just east of what is the present day city, New Orleans. Nutrients and sediment carried by the river formed what can only be called an offshore paradise, which stretched from the Mississippi Gulf Coast to the new Mississippi River Delta, off the coast of southeast Louisiana. And when it comes to the fishing, those in the know are quick to say, some of the best fishing anywhere on this planet is found here, and that's especially true for speckled trout and redfish. Bill Dance's dear friend and guide, Captain Tofield Bourgeois, who operates Bourgeois Charters out of Lafitte, Louisiana, is considered an expert on the seasonal variations, effects of tides, winds, and weather on the fish in this entire area. His fishing charters include seaplane adventures to the chandelures, so that's why our host Bill Dance is here today. Let's join them and see what they have in mind. All right, now what are we going to be doing exactly? Well, you see when we flew over this island, we took a little look, they had like three sandbars out here. So I call them like troughs. There's a, there's a trough, a sandbar, a trough, sandbar, there's three of them. And what's going on is we got a lot of mullets. You've seen them from the air, all the bait fish out here. We just walk parallel to the beach, kind of fishing that trough in an angle like that. So in other words, these uh, sandbars are running parallel with the beach. Right, with the beach, yeah. And what we're going to do, we're going to just kind of fish, we're going to stay in a shallow part. We're in about probably uh, 30 inches of water. So we're going to stay in a shallow part and just kind of just throw in a diagonal like that across that trough and just walk this beach. And just, you know, typically the way it's going to work is when you, when you find mullet, you're going to find, find a prey, you're going to find a predator. So you know. the mullet they're feeding on is about how big? Uh, they got some monsters in here. They got some big old mullets. I've seen some mullets almost two foot long, but the ideal mullet we're looking for is about six, eight inches long. So this is a little four inch badonka donk, so this is easy for them. But like I said, a speckled trout will eat a prey one third its body size. So if we fishing, if we catching four to five pound speckled trout, it wouldn't be uncommon to have a pound and a half mullet sucking his gut. You know, so and they they kind of greedy speckled trout. You'll catch them sometimes with a mullet actually sticking out of his mouth and he's still hitting top of them. So this four inch uh, badonka donk is not not that big a bait for them. No, no, it's actually it's perfect. Yep. Let's go take a little walk. Hit it. <laughs> Don't try it. I'm game. There he is. Wapo. There we go. There we go. That might be your fish, Bill. <laughs> he swam over he and he just swam you. over to the right of tag. Go back out there, cuz it might be some more. Oh, you know he's on the wrong side going around you, Bill. Gotta That's walk all right. That's all right. Like some ride. You look like a Martian walking around there. <laughs> Ooh, wee, look at that. Whoa, baby. Beautiful water. You look like a Martian. With <laughs> all them antennas stuck up. <laughs> he hit up a donk a donk. He hit up a donk a donk. Nice. All right. Woo, woo. That's what I say. Hurt. Hey. Want to take a look at him, son? Want to take a look while we flew out in the Wow, Beautiful look at that water. trout. That's nice, sir. That is a nice trout. All right. Down, get down on the bayou. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't on the bayou. We're going to pass the bayou up. We flew over the bayou. We out here in the, the beautiful water, man. Today's show is sponsored in part by... 
Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Quantum Rods and Reels, outsmart, outfish, outlast, and Mercury Marine, go boldly. Today's Conditions Log is brought to you by Bill Dance Digital. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube for great information that can improve your fishing. come out of his mouth that's why kind of acting a little crazy that's what I'm talking about Woo! that's what we fly out here for right now nope. yeah, whoop, 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 whoop. don't you look at this one Woo! hey <laughs> come here come here brother <laughs> come, come here and look at this one you said come look at a real fish you're trying to come, come here well I can uh, let him get the last bite on you <laughs> One more time. One more time. All right, get him out of there. Got him again? Got him. That's it. it. Now look at that. There you go. That one right there ain't no. That one might pull, pull that a spring off me. Look at that. That is a good. That's an arm full of trout. <laughs> that is a good. That's an arm here. full of trout, okay? Huh? Big old trout. Yes, indeed. All right. All Hang right. On watch that thing. big watch, old hook. Watch you that got big there. old finger. Hey, ouch. All right, cuz. All right, there goes that mile long stringer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm looking southeast and just right over that strip of sand, about 20 yards. It's a strip of sand. It's not over 20 or 30 yards wide. Is the continuation of the Gulf of Mexico. And we're protected from that strong southeast wind that's blowing. What happens when a hurricane comes? Well, that's a, a unique question because it helps some ways and hurts in another. But like far as this particular island, it'll just knock the top right off. It'll just, the waves will come through and, and we'll get, you know, six, eight foot, sometimes 10 foot above tide, normal tides. So this thing, the whole thing, the water just roll over. So it would be nothing if, if a mile category three storm came through here, probably two thirds of the island would, would be gone. It'd be almost just a bar. We just left, the higher, the wider part would stay. And like we had a little tropical storm Lee come through here and it took away a third of this island. But it's, it just builds back really quick. So, I mean, it's like a wash. When a hurricane comes through, it's like a wash of a cleansing. It takes all that, mar all that sand, pushes it over, and now, like natural, just natural winds like we have now, slowly built itself back up with settlement. It's pretty neat. There you go. Oh, there you go. Whoop, 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 whoop. Look at that drag go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go Boy, back he out. blew it up. He sure did. I'm gonna go back out and see what's that. He. Oh, yeah. There you go, man. Watch it. I'm going to get around you. I need the flies, you all right? No, I'm going to probably need them. Probably going to need them. All right. Fill up my water. You've been dragging them? I've been dragging <laughs> I've been trawling with them. Ouch. Watch it. Watch it. You know, get that all fixed. You, you're a trained professional, aren't you? All right. Look at that. Pretty trout. Today's show is sponsored in part by 
Mako Boats, building legends for over 40 years. Gamakatsu, world's finest hooks. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Gamakatsu, because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. Today's show is sponsored in part by Strin, the standard of dependability since 1958. Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. And Mystic Lubricants, lubrication domination. They seem like they like a faster presentation, don't they, Toe? Yeah, well, one thing, especially with you, say being a bass fishermen. A lot, a lot of bass fishermen like to prematurely jerk it too quick. A lot of these big trout, the first hit is a slap on a, of his tail on the bait. The first hit. The second hit a lot of time is the, the closure. So a lot of my bass guys prematurely set the hook too quick. What they're doing is you moving that bait, they want to knock it out. They want to they want to hit him and just knock him out. Then they'll come back for the kill. So sometimes you get it boom, 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 like three hits. Sometimes it's just his tail. They come up and slap it with his tail. So don't set the hook until no, you actually feel the fish. Actually, if he, hit, if he hits it until so your bait moves or whatever happens, just pause for a second and then work your rod tip. Okay, now the equipment we're using today are Quantum's 7-foot medium action smoke rods along with Quantum's 25 smoke reels. We got them spooled with strand 14-pound clear blue fluorescent monofilament and 20-pound strand low-vis green braided super line. Now these lines are perfect for the water clarity we're fishing and to work these topwater lures to get a quick, strong hook set to help keep these hard pulling rascals hooked up. There we go, Cut. Well, I got a good one right here. I hope mine's a mo good. A mo good? A mo good. You shake it? Oh, mine shook it. Shook it off. You shook it off, Cut. Did he fly? Whoa, there we go. We got him back. <laughs> need these pliers, sir? Huh? Need these pliers? I need the pliers. Need the pliers. Need the pliers. Is that out in the water? <laughs> That's what keeps hitting me on my foot. That was a crab keep, down there. Keep, keep dragging him out. That was a crab kept dabbing me on my ankle. Alright, okay. need the pliers. Alright. Alright, get yours in the seat. Let's see what we got here. Woo! They're coming on the other side. You tell you coming around. Look at that. What I'm talking about. Wait. I got the net and everything. Oh, what? Woo, yeah. Here, I'll net him. I can't net him. That's a good try. Ooh, I can't net him either. <laughs> wow. All that. right. That's a big old trout. It looks like mine's bigger, but nobody's, nobody's paying attention to that. <laughs> they they cousins. Huh? That's Boudreau and Thibodeau right here. It's cousins right <laughs> so here. Boudreau and Thibodeau. <laughs> All right, hang on to him. Hang on okay. to him. Put him on his little string. The key, the key thing to keeping fish alive is hook them not in the gills, but through the top and bottom lip. I and don't get my thumb. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I see you. Ow! <laughs> That's what he's saying right All now. Right. I'm turning him loose. Turn him loose. All right. That's too nice trout, man. So you can fly here from your place there at Lafitte, what, 30 minutes? 30 minutes. 28 minutes from my house. Way is, there he is. You got him? Way 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 is, there he is, boy. <laughs> 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 man, I think I could do this something 200 years old. I'll never get tired of it. I know. Trout, I can man. tell by your excitement level. <laughs> I think if I could do it, you know, man. Oh, that's a pretty one. Yes, indeed. That is a pretty one. I'm walk up to him and get him. Nice little tree. I'm going to hold your spot Woo! out there. Hold my spot, cuz. Hold my spot out there. I got it. All right. Let me look at that. There we go. Woo! 
Healthy. Easy, boy. Easy, boy. Easy. I'd be shaking, too, somebody had me all hanging up by the cheek, I guess. But, uh, I mean, I can't get the, the thickness of these fish. They're just, you can't get much healthier than that. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. Do shallow water fish stop biting when there's an east wind? Oh, there's that saying, when out of the east, fish bite the least. But the direction of the wind doesn't directly affect fish. I've caught fish in wind from all directions. It has more to do with the change in the barometric pressure than the wind. By the way, a strong north or east wind usually does mean a change in the pressure and in turn, fish behavior. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Thin North, legendary tackle since 1933. Closed captioning is provided by Bill Dance Digital. Follow us. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin's new Echo Map series of chart plotter sonar combos. These awesome push-button units provide the clearest scanning sonar images on the water. What's the best polarized tent glasses for fishing? Well, I personally wear SolarVat MOSFET gradient glasses, and here's why. The upper part of the lenses are tinted green, which brighten the color in some fishes, making them a whole lot more visible in the water. The green tint also helps filter out off-colored water. The bottom half of the lenses are higher contrast amber, so when I look into the shadows, my vision is much better. If you're looking for the latest fishing information and tips, be sure to check out the free Bill Dance mobile app, available for both iOS and Android users. There's a mullet. They're going right through there again. I'm looking at them. But I see mullet as far as I can see out there jumping. What'd you say? There's three troughs here. There's a sandbar. There's a kind of a trough, and it comes up, and it goes down again. It comes right. up, goes down again, and comes up. Yeah, we in the middle one throwing towards the last. One. Well, what are these mullets? Run the troughs or yeah. run the? Yeah, yeah, they mostly stay in them troughs like that. All right, boy, watch it, watch it. I'm watching. Watch it, make your feet over there. You're going around us. <laughs> oh, come on, big boy. This is a good trout. Really? Good trout. Come on. Ooh, there that's a go. good one. There we go. Man, I'm Get him out of there. Woo! Oh, he hurt. <laughs> well, put it on that. You got a mouthful. That is nice. Boy, that is a good one. Yellow mouth. Yellow mouth. Yellow mouth. That is a good one. <laughs> Boy. Oh, there you go. There we go. <laughs> Look at you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, you see what comes swimming through. That's our game. We've been anytime the mullets come swimming through, that's when these big old trout are following those mullets. There's a big old pile, of, big old pile of mullets swimming through here right now. Careful, sir. Careful with him, man. Grab him. Right. Squeeze him hard. Yeah. Get him out of that water. He ain't no leverage. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. He's in my... <laughs> He's in your neck. Oh, he's hung in my shoe. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Hey, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> he's hung in my shoe. <laughs> oh, hey, I promise you, he's hung in my shoe. I, 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 hey, you see him in my shoe? in your shoe. Whoa, 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 don't let him hang. <laughs> hey, get, hey, hey, he's in my shoe. <laughs> don't, hey, Under the water. Hey, get your pliers and get the... Oh, hey, oh hey, there he goes through your legs. <laughs> Oh, man. He was oh, hung in my shoe. Hey, I ain't worried about you. He was, he was, he was hung. He was hung in my shoe again. <laughs> Tell him there he is right there. This dude here hey. is getting a revenge on me, hey. boy. He is. I got here. He is right here. Look, he's wrapped around his string. I got the string. 
<laughs> Where's the fish? I got the, the man, I could got off in the Here, net. give me the fish. You go with the, the fish. fish. Once you stop the fish. <laughs> Alright, I got the fish. <laughs> wow. Here. Alright, let me get the let me get the net out of the scenario. Hey. Hey, don't be biting my line, you <laughs> If this ain't a mess. That, 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 hey, up, the up, hook was hung in my shoe and I was scared death he was going to run that thing in my ankle. Here. All right. Hang there that thing go. up, brother. <laughs> now what have I done? <laughs> huh? Look at this. What? Look here. <laughs> Watch that hook, I, man. <laughs> that stupid net. <laughs> Boy. Oh, 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 man. I'm telling you, he was, I saw the... The donk a donk hung in my shoe. Oh, lucky hey, lucky and the back, hey, local. the back hook was doing, he was giving me <laughs> this, and I said, oh Lord, <laughs> please, please get that fish <laughs> off my shoe. <laughs> well, even when they're offshore having tremendous fun on an island paradise in the Gulf of Mexico, Bill and Tofield can't outrun Big Ben. He says, hey guys, we're out of showtime again for today. That does not mean, however, that the guys have to quit fishing. So they're going to keep casting away and then next week pick up right where they left off today. Be sure to join us then for part two of a Chandelure Fly-In. We hope you've enjoyed Bill Dance Saltwater and learned that you can do this. Please join us right here again next week. <laughs>